Section 3.4, Avogadro's number and the mole. So, if I tell you that I'm going to buy you a dozen donuts, you can think in dozens because you know how to think in dozens. Or, if you would rather think in donuts, you could convert that into 12 donuts. If I were to say a baker's dozen, or... If you, probably, you might not know, but like a ream of paper, do you know that's 500 sheets? Like if you buy a copy paper, a ream of paper is 500, 500 of those. So a, um, it's a collective noun. It's, a, it's like a dozen. It's a number, but it's a very, very big number. The reason it has to be so big is because that the stuff you're working with in chemistry is so small that you, you, it would be cumbersome to use ridiculously long numbers to talk about how much stuff that you had. If you had to, to somehow count out uh, quazillions of, of molecules in order to do an experiment, it would take you the, your whole life just to count, and you'd die before you finished. So a Avogadro's number, which is named, not the guy who discovered this, but was named um, memorially for, for a uh, scientist, um, is a certain amount that is equal to the amount in grams on the periodic table of any element. So if you look on the periodic table and you see in AMUs the atomic mass, so let's say carbon, the atomic mass under carbon is 12, all right? So if I were to take 12, not AMUs, which is protons and neutrons, or the average between a proton and a neutron, but if I take instead 12 grams, then what, what has been determined, which is brilliant, is that there is exactly Avogadro's number of atoms in that 12 grams of carbon. If I look under hydrogen and I see that it has an atomic mass of one, and I take one gram of hydrogen gas, I will have exactly Avogadro's number. It's the same number. Because hydrogen gas is small, uh, carbon is 12 times bigger, so whatever the number is, the atomic mass un under the element uh, symbol, in grams is one mole of a substance. So a mole is going to be using Avogadro's number, and it's a very big number. Avogadro's number is 6.02214 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So that is a 6 with tw uh, 22, no, 21 zeros after it. So it's more than 600, it's more than 6 million, it's more than 6 billion or trillion or quadrillion. It's so big. If you were to have, um, it's more than, it's more by, by thousands than the liters of water in all the oceans. If you were to have a mole of marbles, it would cover the entire earth two miles deep. Every square inch of the earth, two miles deep in marbles, if you had that many. Okay, so it's a, it's a huge number. But it's the number of molecules in the amount of grams that if you were to add up the molecular mass of that, of that it would be that many molecules. Or if you had the, the atomic mass under the periodic table of gold, and it said so many hundred uh, AMUs for gold, if you had that many grams, that would be exactly 6.02214 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So it's the most useful piece of knowledge in chemistry. It allows you to take the stuff out of books and actually bring it to the table and use it with spoons digging out of jars and stuff like that. Okay, so Avogadro's number has to be memorized. 6.02214 times 10 to the 23rd somethings, okay? And one mole is going to be that 
number. So instead of, because 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd itself is big, so just call it a mole. One mole of carbon is 12 grams of carbon. The molar mass would be the mass of one mole of a substance. So if it's the molar mass of an element, then you simply go to the periodic table, you find the atomic mass of that element, and one mole of that element weighs that many grams. Okay, so you're making a, a shift. You're going from AMUs, which is the on the periodic table, to grams, which I can measure with a scale. I can measure with even a cheap scale, uh, can measure in grams. So that's that's very, very useful. So a molar mass is the is the mass in grams of one mole of stuff, and one mole of stuff is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So the molar mass of an element is the atomic weight. The molar, uh, if it's a diatomic element, it's twice the molar, it twice the weight from the periodic table since there's two of the molecules. If the formula weight of say um, H2O, you would have to add up all the, the atoms and find out what the, the mass of the molecule is in AMUs. Simply convert that to grams by, instead of saying AMUs, just say grams. Suddenly now, you if you take the formula weight in grams, you have got one mole of a substance. So if you have grams and I want to go to uh, formula unit. So if I have, you know, six grams of carbon and I take it out of the jar and I put it on a weighing dish and I say, okay, I've got six grams of carbon. How many, how much, how much carbon do I have? Like how many molecules or how many, or how many atoms of carbon would I have? So you use the molar mass to go to moles. And then from moles, you go to Avogadro. That's, uh, that's the, the relationship. So let's, let's take one. Let's say I've got four grams of water and I want to know how many water molecules. I should have written in another color. Okay. So I've got four grams of water. How many water molecules do I have? Well, I have to go from grams to moles and I have to go through the periodic table to do it. So let's see. In, I've got two hydrogens, each with one AMU, so that's going to be two. Then I have one oxygen at 16 AMUs. That's 16 AMUs. Add them together, that's 18 AMUs, right? Now I'm going to convert it quickly just by calling AMU's grams. In 18 grams of water, I've got one mole of water. Because when I add the formula mass up and take it in grams, it's grams for every mole. 18 grams per mole is the molar mass of water. So I'm going to uh, write in black. I am going to say that there are 18 grams. See, I've got grams, so I divide by grams, so get rid of it. 18 grams in one mole of water. Okay, so grams of water cancels, grams of water cancels. Now I'm gonna be in moles of water. So four divided by 18 is going to be 0. 0.2222222 moles of water all right so i'm here to here so i've got that now i need to know how many molecules that's formula units remember that's either formula units for ionic bonds or molecular molecules for molecular bonds they're still called formula units because i have a formula here h2o is a formula so go from moles i know that in one mole of water how many, at, how many molecules do I have? One mole equals 12 donuts equals one dozen. One dozen equals 12. Well, one mole equals 6.022 times 10 to the 
one four times ten to the twenty third molecules. So moles of water cancels, moles of water cancels. So it's point two 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 times six point oh two two one four times ten to the twenty third, and I end up with one point three three eight etc times 10 to the 23rd so 1.3 times 10 to the 23rd that is a 1 and 3 places 338 and then 20 zeros past it so that's enormous number of molecules of water in 4 grams of water okay so and a gram weighs about a paper clip worth or a, or a raisin's worth and I've got four paper clips worth of water and I've got so many molecules of water that I couldn't fill the blackboard if I tried to write just the zeros okay it would it would be that big so the mole relationships is through the periodic table so if you want an atom a mole of, of say um, this is nitrogen I go to the periodic table, find out four, 14 AMUs, suddenly just make it 14 grams. 14 grams for every mole, and then for every mole, I've got 6.02 times 10 to 23rd. That's how you do it. One mole of atoms, ions, or molecules contains Avogadro's number of those particles. One mole of molecules or formula units contains Ad Avogadro's no number times the number of atoms in the compound.